Welcome back to the channel. My name is Justin Noel, and today we are going to be watching my second practice match with young Oliver Squire. Thanks to the uh, kind words on the first video that I played against Michihito Kageyama of Japan, everyone seems to like the improved layout, so I want to thank Hussein Paknahard from Backgammon Galaxy for helping me out with that. It's been really appreciated. And before we begin this video, if anyone is interested in backgammon lessons with me, Justin Noel, please feel free to send me an email at justin at backgammonuniversity.com. I forgot to do the YouTube thing. Smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, and please feel free to leave a comment down below if you like this content as well. Let's begin. Good match. All right, so the traditional 6-3 split, very common opening. Yeah, this corner is very difficult. 6-4 is going to hit and split. These opening sequences are, I think, worth learning. Second roll, third roll, just kind of understanding what your game plan should be uh, has been really helpful. I think making the 20 point anchor should suffice. Oftentimes we like to hit with that ace on the five point, but not always, of course. When you can make the 20 point anchor, it's pretty difficult to turn down. All right, we just anchor. Seems to be the most important thing in this situation. And since my other five can't clean up that blot, we'll just play 13 to eight. Two one misses. I think the double slot is good. I know you're down in the race, but it seems pretty efficient to double slot. Here I was kind of happy to see the four, I guess, to hit. Maybe I roll something that helps me get off of my anchor. 6-2 is a great shot, just making the four point, trying to secure better structure and hopefully find a way to alleviate the checkers on the 18 point at some, at some future interval of time. 5-2, <laughs> and now I'm like looking at the situation because the second I make the 18 point and I know I'm up this much in the race, I'm really thinking about trying to get rid of it and I'm, I'm putting in the higher analysis here. Because on three ply, it looks like it's correct to run and then on plus, it looks like it's mildly incorrect to do so. Could just play 13, eight, six to four, but I feel like maybe it's a good time. These situations are tricky. Clearly like a 5-3, five, 5-4 five, would be better to jump off of this anchor with. Maybe not 5-3, five, 5-3 three. Five, three would make the three point, I guess, but we'll just give it a go and uh, <laughs> and see what the computer thinks later. Just always get hit. Eight to six seems strong. I'm just happy the decision was close. And uh, I'm looking at the five, but you know, generally we don't need to overplay positions, right? 13 to eight is just more often correct in these spots where like, not every number he rolls is gonna kill me. You know, he's got three guys back right now. I only have one guy back, and I, I think it's my prime objective, obviously, is just to try to get that, that last guy out. I don't wanna have a second guy back. Three, and I played this pretty quick over the board. I, I don't know why I played eight to four this quickly. I don't like to give my opponent sixes from the roof to hit me, but since their 13 point is stripped, hitting me with a six is a bit costly for them as well, yeah? So that was uh, worth noting and remembering for the next matches that I play. I generally don't play moves that quickly unless I'm playing online, so. <laughs> it's 
it's good to see your habits on film, see what you're doing that could be improved if it was a misunderstanding over the board or just a procedural error, like just picking up the dice a bit too quick, not giving any thought to other alternatives in the moment because, you know, you just don't think there are any for some reason when there, there clearly could be. Four, two. I guess we just make the four point. You know, if you're down 50 pips in the race, you're not so concerned about that other checker being hit. So Oliver made a very good play there. You know, if I hit that other checker, maybe um, maybe he anchors, right? So we give Oliver a little early birdie here, as we like to say, where clearly the position is a cube. We're up 50 pips in the race, and I know he has good structure. There are a few bad rolls, but like, my distribution is quite good and should lead to pretty easy bring home of this position, I think. <laughs> now it's a real cube, I say. <laughs> Keep them off balance. You never know. <laughs> I like this play here from Oliver making the outside point and doing the slotting, but the computer disagrees. I think it it maybe wants a second checker back to potentially make an anchor and maybe I get tricked into hitting it and improving Oliver's winning chances. Which is why they want to just cover and play 14 to 13 instead of playing safe here. Getting hit actually improves his winning chances. And 6-4 makes the point. Six three fans. Six five is two down. I have a safe play available, but if he enters next roll, it's gonna be hard to clear. So I just take the chance. I pay off to five one double ones right now. And just try to make the rest of the game easy for myself. So far so good. Four three. I'm torn. Do I want him to enter high or do I want him to fan? You know, I'll win more gammons if he continues to fan, but things might get awkward, um, you know, with the ace point. So I'm happy things have turned out how they have so far. The only point I need to clear next is the seven, and then we can try to go off to the races. Three one clears the seven point. Three two. Well, you know, he's thinking, am I going to try to win or am I just here for a gammon save sort of play, right? And since he's on the 20 point anchor, the odds of him getting a shot here are slim so he chose with the gammon save option right and since i don't really believe in the idea of like double jeopardy as traditionally spoken i i just take a checker off instead of playing from six to two there a lot of people would play six to two just hoping to clear the six point um next roll but it leaves two more numbers here i only leave a shot with six five and if I pre-clear the six in this spot, I would leave a shot with six one and five one and more shots is not better. I think more shots is not better, right? So if I can take checkers off and leave fewer shots, how can that be bad? Six one, right? If I make some other silly play, I might have left a shot this way. Five four is just gammon save. So we play the five in and the four out. If he was losing a Jin Gammon, right? So 
like like it didn't matter like if you didn't get a shot and you didn't hit it you were losing a gammon your game plan is blue here would be to just build your board you would slot all the points to try to create a six prime so if you got the shot and hit it you could win in this spot because your chances of getting a shot are so low and you can actually mitigate your your ability to get gammon in this spot you don't really want to waste pips you just want to kind of bear it in and get around you're still going to hang back on the 20 until i clear the six of course but you can do that with just a single checker right the only number you might be slightly worried about is double ones but i mean even then it's not something to lose sleep over or pips over to be fair And this is a play to win the game instead of save the gammon. 5-3 clears the point. 5-1 is out and in. And it looks like Oliver should be able to save it unless I roll doubles. Will I roll doubles? 5-2. Oliver's just trying to get crossovers with all of the numbers so he can bear in efficiently. 5-4. Come on, I need to roll doubles. Oliver, slow down. 6-2. And we don't want to have two checkers on the same point, so he does this. 6-3. 5-2. Double threes, let's go. No. Roll an ace, Oliver. Oh, there was a chance with the ace up. Yeah, I mean, wasting the pips there with the 5-4 could have been quite costly. Could have been. It was not, but it could have been. Could have been. 4-3. So now that Oliver's trailing in the match, this play is actually correct for money playing two down with 4-3. Uh, it's going to be extra correct at the score because he's trailing. And after your opponent plays two down, essentially they've dedicated their entire opening role to offense. And so it incentivizes you to slot with your aces just because if he does roll a four and ends up hitting you he doesn't do what he was trying to do which was build on the other side of the board and if they do miss you and they do get to build on the other side of the board maybe you make your five point as well and then equalize the game if they're focused on doing this, you can try to do that, right? It's always my position versus their position in backgammon. My position versus their position. If we spend all of our time just looking at our side of the board and not kind of gauging what we should do based on what we see on the other side of the board, we're going to make a bunch of a bunch of errors for for no for no reason. Okay. Michi's trying to get onto the Wi-Fi right now. I don't know my own password. I just sit outside of my house using my Wi-Fi right now. Mm -hmm. So the best place to make the seven, which is a blocking point for my checkers on the 24 points, so it seems strong. But I can also see why Oliver would want to try to split against me here. You know, I am likely going to make the five point next roll. And then if you're split, maybe you can make an advanced anchor against that. You're also not stripping your mid by just making the seven. Six two, okay. So I could hit outside, um, but I don't. 
because everything hits back and I don't really get to gain the ground in the race that I was hoping to with like a hit. I play the two down for a second, noticing that the six four is duplicated to anchor and hit me on the outside. But if he does start to prime me, I think the split has a lot of value. I think it's good to have a dialogue with yourself about what you think is happening, what you think should be happening, how things are like progressing, what you think is going to be happening next. If I do this and my opponent rolls like this, what does my position look like at the end? That sort of stuff. You know, we're practicing, so I'm having this dialogue kind of out loud. Um, Just hoping for an easier six to play. You know, I, I have this dialogue internally as I play. Oftentimes, most of the time, of course. And it's just a good practice to get into because if you can kind of see which way the game is leaning after your play and their next likely roles and this and that, you'll be able to find good plays uh, more often. I think that's what ZZ means, um, you know, with his book title, you know, backgammon, like through the art of storytelling, you know, just kind of talking to yourself about positions, talking through the positions, seeing how things are going to play out. Sort of a, a chess mindset, you know, if I go here and you go there and you do this and I do that sort of thinking, right? It'll help you find the best plays. If you can accurately read the book, essentially, right? But if you're making mistakes, right, and you're not talking to yourself about the story and you've got the story wrong, how, how can you correct um, your thinking there? So Oliver's thinking about whether or not he should hit or he shouldn't hit. I like the hit. Although you can see that it's quite close, so it's not a big deal one way or the other. But I personally like the hit. I like making plays that are going to try to win the game. Um, most of the time, although sometimes, you know, you can get a little, get a little, huh? I could get gammoned, and then the fear creeps in a little bit, and uh, you could talk yourself out of making plays that'll win games just to save gammons, and then you find out later that it was better just to try to win the game. And and regardless of how many times you, you see it and you remember that it's probably better just to try to make the play that wins the game, sometimes the you can trick yourself. So the four to me is clear. I think about making the four point for a second, but then I see there's a bunch of rolls blue has that might take away the momentum from me. So I play the four out to make the anchor. And I, I, I'm pretty confident in that, that the four is the most important thing in this play. And then once I conclude that that is the most important thing about this play, I then start looking at the different twos, right? So here, ace is hit, but twos cover, fours cover, six covers, right? There's not even like any mild duplication of any numbers, right? There's just great diversity of numbers. And here, the four, if it hits, it has to break the back anchor, and it's also duplicated to cover, right? So for me, that was my thought process and my story that I told myself in order to play this two versus one of the other twos, right? And so if you really want to improve your game, getting in the habit of just, you know, not just looking at positions and doing head stuff like this, hmm, hmm, and just kind of, you know, seeing what, what maybe looks better to you in your own eye, but just talking yourself through what you think could be happening, what your opponents could roll, what it looks like if they roll these numbers versus other numbers, right? And and working working that way. This double six is a pretty good shake. Just depends on how you want to play it. This play, I think, is okay. It's only one percent behind, and I'm just checking the race now. 
I'm up eight pips, so clearly I don't have a cube. I'm not up enough, and I'm up in the match, so I'm gonna chill for a moment. This six five is a great roll. I get to just try to clear this, make that outside point, come around. I could have made a play that left no shots, but this just looked too clear. Ah, oh, double five. So now, the best you can do, Austin. Yeah, I, I, he's, he's rolling pretty fast here. He rolled when I walked away. I saw it. <laughs> yeah, I walked away for a second. I come back. He's rolled double fives. I go, where'd this come from? It's on film, you know. You... It's on film. It's on film, yeah. Oliver. Are you sure? It's going to the world. No, I'm joking. So I'm down one pip now. Yeah, so I'm actually down a pip. And since this is basically a contactless game, all we have to do is just clear the midpoint. And there's so much timing on the outside that I don't really see how it could be difficult to clear that. We're just trying to play for racing efficiency now. We want one of these like sloping triangle positions with checkers stacked on the six, five, and four, just bearing in like that to just give ourselves a very efficient racing position when we when we bear off. Now we're just thinking about the best ways to bear it in to leave ourselves good diversity with our numbers when we bear in next and just trying to achieve efficient racing structure on the way in. And I'm also focused on rolling big numbers. I hope it helps, you know, thinking about big numbers. <laughs> to one, Oliver is not thinking about big numbers. That is a problem. Five, two. Maybe I could just play two down, but this seems okay as well. Five, four. Five, two, so I'm up three pips. Doing the trice count in like a money situation, the point of last take would be, I believe, like 12 pips, and I'm only up three, right? So I'm nowhere near a cube yet. Four, two. All right. Four, three. Mm, let's see here. Just trying to find my distribution play and I need another checker on the four point and I don't love having this many checkers on the six point to be honest with you, but I did get two crossovers and I was able to put one on the four. So my structure is looking very efficient, though not fast. Yeah. <laughs> so I won't waste many pips in this position bearing off on average, but it's not like this is like the fastest position, but Oliver's position and my position are so similar. that it's easy to compare who is like doing well in this race by just looking at the raw pip count where, you know, if I had a position that was looking like this and Oliver had a more flat position, right? We're looking at two different types of racing structures, this triangle position versus flat positions versus positions that are pushed too far forward. They all have different amounts of what we would call like wastage in a racing position. And so these positions that are dissimilar 
have to be looked at differently than positions that are similar. What I like to say is if you have a position that looks like an apple and one that looks like an orange, you turn them both into pairs to compare them. And that's what like EPC formulas are. This is like the funniest play he makes all game, by the way, with five to two instead of like six to three. I don't know what that is. I know it's not like a, an actual percentage difference really between the plays, maybe like less than 1%. But I mean, you've got so many checkers on the six point and filling in the three just seems normal. But um, that's when you know you're thinking hard. So I'm looking at the race, I'm up. so the race is 66. I'm figuring out my point of last take being eight pips. I'm seeing that I am not up anything. And I'm just double checking, make sure I'm not up anything. And then I take my time and then I'm triple checking that I'm not up anything. And then I'm thinking of my good numbers. I will say that it doesn't make any sense to just think of your good numbers. Although, I mean, it, it is helpful. You know, you wanna know what numbers hit but like in a racing position, just thinking of like double sixes or double fives is just more fun for me than thinking of numbers like two one and double ones. Uh, so <laughs> I am trying to enjoy myself when I play. And so just like good numbers, good numbers, good numbers, right? Because if you play well, right? I mean, playing well is the only thing you can really control in this game. You can't control what you're gonna roll. You can't control what your opponents are going to roll. Uh, you can't control how your opponent plays, right? So the only thing you can do is have control over your checker plays and your doubling decisions. And then I think about good numbers, double fives, let's go. And double twos, not good enough. I gained 20, he gained eight, which makes me up 12. I cube and pass. So during this match, I've been preparing food as well for my, my guests. And so we take a little break, boom, eat our food, and now we, we come back right. mid-match. <laughs> for one splits. If I were trailing in the match by a bunch, maybe I slot, but at the score, I think it's better to just split. He rolls double fives and blitzes me, and I fan. So for money, I know this position as a no double. And so I know Oliver should be doubling at the score. But since I know this is a no double for money, uh, it's impossible for me to pass at the score. And now I instantly regret my decision of taking this cube and I'm second guessing myself because of double fours, of course. <laughs> Very results dependent. I thought Oliver made a good play here coming up. Um, I'm never really confident about playing six to two hitting, but I guess because you're bringing material down, you can hit as well. And then you can also hit outside and put two on the roof, which I like, especially after seeing Oliver make that play where he hits outside, brings a guy down and plays six to two. And now I've got three on the roof, right? And how bad can three on the roof be? I need a two really bad here. Really bad. I think this should better not be right. <laughs> I'm glad I didn't bet Oliver on this play. I thought I might have played 13 nine times two, but I couldn't bet him on anything because it looked like a really good play when I saw I had three on the roof. 
And this 5-4 is super interesting. They want to just play down and hit on the 5 instead of making the 4 because now you have no spares to cover on the deuce. And now I have good 5s and 2s. My 5s will anchor, my deuces will hit. Um, and that was like blunder territory, but that was a very difficult play. 6-2, of course, has to hit. And now I really need to enter. Yes, and that's why you think of your good numbers, because when they happen, you feel like you Still control the universe. And Oliver's going to roll like one, two, and three, so I might have two on the roof next roll. Three, one. All right, I would love to anchor, please. Give me a five or a two. Two, one. Okay, so I did anchor, but it's the, uh, <laughs> it's, the it's the worst one. No, two, three, I guess, two, four. Four hits to five is, yeah, yeah, no, it's the worst one. But I'm very happy I anchored. Double fives misses me completely. If I can make the five, I've got myself a game here. And this should just go to the six because the aces are duplicated to hit and cover. So I want like a three one. No, six four. All right, so it doesn't work, but I <laughs> I did just roll a 5-2, so I think I'm doing okay. Maybe he misses me again. All right, so I rolled a bad number, and all I'm trying to do is not ruin my position with this bad number. Just try to, you know, play with the blots I already have, not try to expose anything new, and just hope I get away with this. I don't need to do anything crazy because my position stinks. All right, one more time. Please, let's see what I can do. I'm asking to be missed. And he rolls double four. So that wish has gone unanswered. I would make the 20 and hit, come down and just come out. I'd come down to give myself another builder to make the five point, of course. And coming out with the other one gives you threes and fives to hit the other checker on the outside. And you've got fours, ones, and threes to make the five point. Five, four, okay, and then we get to clean up the blot. I feel like I'm doing terribly, but not as bad as I was when I was on the roof, so I'm not celebrating yet, but I am definitely happy that I entered. Two, one, hits and comes down. I need a five really badly. No. Oh, not the time to fan. 5-4 covers. 5-3. Uh, 6-2. So the 6 comes out and the 2 just comes a little bit closer, I think. This is smelling like a gammon to me. I'm just hoping I enter. And just move it forward. Uh, I don't know. Like, uh, what do I have? Some like secret number that hits them from the roof? Like uh, two seven or something? No, all right, two sevens don't exist. So I don't know what this is. It's just gonna make it harder to clear the eight later with that builder there. Mm. Mm. Two one. So I've entered, and do I play to win, or do I play to just try to save Gammon? And 
it's hard for me not to try to f make the play that wins the most games. I'm trying not to be scared. <laughs> it's the correct word. <laughs> um, but I was like, man, he could roll a seven anyway, you know? Uh, so I'm like, okay, maybe I can win. Maybe I can win. And I know I get gammoned a lot by hitting. But I thought I also could get gammoned a lot by not hitting. So... Fear is only in the mind. It's wrong to hit by 1%, but we can see that it wins more. It just gets gammoned more, so maybe I just don't want the swing and the score for him to be winning after this game, but eventually I just, I just go for it, and I do get missed, which I'm happy about. Bar 2185 seems like a good play. Just cover. And I do cover, but then I have to play 137. And I was so worried about getting gammoned at the score that I wish I didn't even see this play because 13 to 7, 8 to 5 looks fairly automatic if you're just trying to win. I mean, this must win more. Every time he rolls 4 1, 4 2, 2 1, double twos, double fours, you know, it's just like. Your position improves just so much. And this just tries to save Gammon. And I made a play that wins more games and gets Gammon more last time. I feel like I kind of got away with one, which is why I ended up making this blunder. I, I should have just stuck to my mantra of making the plays that are going to win the most games. But... This was one of these instances where I chickened out. 5-3, I'm just gonna make the three point. Uh, you know, a part of me is thinking about slotting the five, but I might get an outside fly shot with some five next roll. And I would rather not have a blot in my board if I get the opportunity to hit somebody. So I just make the three point. Six, five, right. So I just play two down. And the reason why I don't play 23, 12 is because if I do get a shot later, if he's clearing the eight point, when I jump off my anchor to hit somebody, I no longer have an anchor because I don't have a spare there, right? So if I keep the third checker there and he leaves a shot from the eight point later, I still have the 23 point, which is actually good, right? Because it keeps him from entering and attacking me back on the 23. And hopefully I'll have good structure and I'll be able to contain him by then. And then I'll be able to come off uh, much easier is the whole point of keeping the third guy there. If you guys are thinking about the who's, what's, when's, where's, and why's of why I would not come out there, that's the reason why. I might get a shot, and I'd like to keep my anchor. Just to stop the counterattacks. 6-5 now, though. It looks awkward the other way if I just keep on playing forward, so I'll come out now. 6-2. 4-3. And I should slot the four point here, but I'm kind of in gammon save mode, even though I do get some shots here. Or I could get some shots here. 
but I'm thinking maybe I don't want to waste pips. But if I don't get a shot, it seems quite likely I lose a gammon, so maybe I should just be playing gammon, uh, not gammon save, but just playing to win. I do fill it in this time. I see his position looks awkward. It did look awkward, now it looks fine. 6-4, so the 6 comes in, the 4 comes out. Four one is just two off. Please don't gammon me. Six five. Ah. Oh. So if this checker didn't land on my eight point, I'm biased against having two checkers sitting on the same point. I. I should just be staying. I think, at least for another roll or so. But my brain is so focused on not wanting to get gammoned, and I see he's even on the outside and nothing's going to leave a shot this next roll, that I think maybe it's okay to run, and it is not okay to run. This one is like an 8% blunder or something, I think. I think it is at least. Let's see the PR. I'm not sure. It's a 1.4. Maybe it wasn't that bad. Nope, got a little worse. Okay, yeah, it was. So 2.02 .02 now. So yeah. I mean, imagine I do all this and I don't save the gammon. Like how annoying is it that I didn't stay? Maybe I did. Where was this checker? Was it on the blue? So Michi's doing a live transcription, and I think he missed one of the rolls, which is fine. It happens to all of us, myself included. You'll see, hopefully, when I upload Oliver's match against Michi. While I'm doing the transcription over the board, I had to do a separate live transcription for the video. You roll 5-3 twice in a row. So I think I cut the video at some point and come back. Um, I, have, I have the video on my phone. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. Be sure it's your roll. <laughs> After the break, I'm like, are you sure it's your roll, Oliver? Might be mine. 3-1 is not ideal. So, you know, if I have the ace point open in a spot like this, anytime I bear in, if I make this play, 2-1, 3-1, right, 4-1, 5-1, 6-1, I miss. If I play the other checker in and I play 2-1, to one, now I only miss with 2-1 and 3-1 and double ones. But I take off with 4-1 and 5-1 and 6-1. So I gain in those situations. So two to one is clear. And I'm just praying Oliver doesn't roll doubles. Five, one. Okay, so I'm a favorite to get off. Let's go, five, one, let's go. Gammon saved. Saving Gammon feels better than winning sometimes. Feels like you've cheated death. Both of us are walking the tightrope of the PR. Yeah, five two splits. Four five just splits and comes down. Six two hits. Five two hits and maybe comes down. Could also step up. I'm not sure which one I would play. 
Two one enters and fights for the five point again. I do not get away with it. He does make the 20. Five three for me makes the defensive 20. I feel much better now. Six five is a terrible roll. So I think since he's up in the race, he just wants to minimize shots. So I think 11 to six, eight to two seems reasonable just because you only get hit with aces. Double twos, tough, 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 tough. So I'm down 40 pips, so I'm thinking I want to stay back and put pressure on the 23 point, uh, the checker they have on their on their own two point, my 23 point. So I'm thinking I just do this, you know. Um, that's my, 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 my plan at least. If I make the 11, I make the four, it makes it harder for the checkers on the the 20 point to leave. I've strengthened my board. I know I leave an ace shot, but because his board is so weak, I don't really mind. But it ends up being wrong, and that's okay. <laughs> I'm allowed to be wrong, you know. It's fine. Um, so, of course, this just makes the four point. I still only hit him with aces. But that was the story I was telling myself about that last play. And so the reason why we talk to ourselves is because now I can try to adjust the story, right? What was I saying that was wrong about that? How can I readjust my story in my own head so when I see a similar position in the future, I can say different things about it that will hopefully lead me to a better play. Yeah, and I don't want to get hit with random aces from the roof. Five, one, three, one, two, one, double ones. He's going to hit me. Like, for what? For what? Double ones would have got me. And the computer just likes eight to seven times two here instead of switching because I think it likes having that structure in front of me, right? Having the four point in front of both of those back checkers. Five one, just two down. I see him doing this, I get a little bit excited. Now he notices he can do this, which is a much better play. Sixes, this can't be bad. So yeah, I'm thinking about getting rid of my 20 point, but I'm not up a crazy amount in the race. So why not make a new point? Slot the three, right? And uh, just see how we get on. Four one hits and goes to the ace point. You probably wouldn't mind stepping up here if you could, but you don't really have an ace to play. So maybe if you had a number like four or three, you would step up and play six to three, right? Like you're not necessarily loving to stay back here, even though it does put pressure on the blot that I have. It's just that like, what else are you gonna do with your ace, right? So it feels like this is the only play. Four, three, I don't get to make it. So I enter and do this. Yeah, I guess just cover and six to three. Doesn't really want to leave any more shots. I really like to cover. 
Six three does not cover, so I'm just gonna run around. Hope to be missed again. Two one hits. I love how the computer's like going, you know what, I'm gonna play three to two here. This checker on the three point doesn't really do anything. Uh, and the only place it can go, really, to be used efficiently is on the two point. And so it just wants to slot it there even though I'm on the roof, which is wild. This place seems normal. Four, six, uh, do I really wanna come out? Maybe I just wanna come in. Coming out, he might just hit me outside and then I, I, I lose my close race. And then he also might roll five, two and hit a second guy, which I don't want. And he plays here because if you make the bar, you get hit with random sevens and eights, which is unnecessary. Just come around again. Four two should just clear the eight point. All right, the race is close. So if the race is close, you really don't want to get hit because getting hit is bad for the race and the race is super close. So that's why the computer wants to clear the eight point because the race is so close you don't really want to get hit. And now I get to hit, go to the six and make the three point, which must be a good roll. And he fans, cube. And it's a 400 pass. I'm up 12 pips in the race. He's on the roof against a four point board. He's looking to, you know, he's gonna need to, to I'm not up, what, what's the race here? Oh, I'm looking at back plays. Yeah, I'm up 12 pips. And so like, if he if he hits me, what does that even gain for him if you look at his board, right? Okay, so you hit me, then what? I hit you back, you lose Gammon? Counting the race, thinking about it. And the longer he thinks, the, the longer I think he might take. Like the more I think he might, he might, he might actually take this. There's like a greater than two percent chance now. Now there's no way, no way, there's no way. Okay. So now I've got four. He's got two. Um, you know, when we speak about scores in backgammon, we talk about the away score. The away score is like it's just the situation that we're in, right? So now we're at three away, five away. Um, Three away, five away, funny enough. Um, all things being equal, 65% match winning chances for the leader, 35% match winning chances for the trailer at this point. And a good way to remember this is three away, five away is 35, three and a five for the trailer. I think the four two should just make the four even though it leaves a shot. Five three, okay. So I'm not just gonna run because I'd like to make an advanced anchor. He only has eight checkers in the zone. So yeah, I just step up and come down, right? The guy only points on me with double fours, three one, and double ones, right? He's gonna hit me loose with other numbers, but I might just hit him back. And he might miss me entirely. Now I really need to anchor. Six two, what a shot. Let's go. Now I feel good, right? When you're up in the match and you have an advanced anchor and you know that you're just like not gonna get gammoned in this game, it feels fantastic. And here he needs to make the 11 times three and play six to four, which 
is like it's good to reestablish contact in that in that quadrant, right? So you normally start off with the eight point over there, got rid of it. Now it's nice to to rebuild a point out there, offer yourself a little bit more control. He does this. And then I roll double fours. And this was like the one number I was thinking about. Like, how am I gonna play this? So after this play, I'm up. I'm up in the race. And he's got a good board, so I think maybe I just want to get around. The other play, I leave shots with 4-1 and 2-1 and double ones. This ends up being a 6% error, even though my play wins more games. So this is like a situation where making the play that you know is going to win more games can be wrong. Just because I can win a game in the other way. Uh, so yeah, that was a 6% error there where, you know, I just go, okay, well, this is going to win more games because I've cleared the 18 point. I've come all the way around. I've achieved full freedom. I'm up 23 pips in the race now. Just felt good. I think Michi is confused. He's like, why don't you just make the five point? And I'm like, well, uh, maybe I just win more the other way. And here I just go to the one. This ends up being correct. You see, I'm not playing for contact. I'm playing for the race. And so keeping my spare checkers on the outside in front of his anchor, right? Like playing a play like six to three just looks bad because I need those spares to play with to give myself more chances to roll doubles to bring this game home. Right? So I don't care what my home board looks like, really. I just want to give myself enough time to bring this game home so I don't leave a shot, right? And the 10 point isn't really an asset, right? It's just another point to clear in front of the anchor. And now that I've cleared it, I'm going to see that I'm up a good enough amount in the race. I probably should have cubed that. And the computer goes eight to four, three to one, right? They even keep that extra checker on the outside so I can handle rolling a few more sixes. And I've lost my market. And after double twos, I double and pass. Michi's asking about double fours. You could have made the five point. I go, I, I know. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, let's, let's continue. He's like, yes. why do you not make the five? And I'm like, I don't know. It just wins more the other way. And my brain is trained to find the DMP play. DMP meaning double match point, which is essentially the equivalent of one away, one away. Four one enters and makes the nine. Six four. Thought I break contact easier. Oh, I guess we can just split. Why are you not to hit me? Yeah, I'll have to read about it in the book later. Mm. Hmm. Dirk wrote a book called uh, "To Hit or Not to Hit." I've been reading. I think it's very good if um, you guys don't own a copy out there. Double twos, and you just make the four point. With double twos, you just often make the four point. It's just too good of a use of the extra checkers on the six. And here I just make the three. I'm gonna look at making the five for a millisecond, but it seems a bit much. <laughs> it seems a bit much to leave just three plots out there for no reason. Four, three just makes the five. Now I would like double six or something. Six, five runs, okay, I'll take it. 
five two. This is a uh, this is the the play of the 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 match or this game I think. This is difficult. Um, you know, two down seems very normal. But with the blot in my home board, the attacking only one checker back. You have the two point made, so the priming play just isn't really paying as many dividends as you'd like. The attack becomes more valuable to keep me from trying to escape. He's counting the race here. He's going to seize down a little bit, and then he's not going to double, I think. Uh, you might just miss. And I do get miss. Let's go. Five three makes the outside point. All right, so I've cleared both of my back men. I've made an outside point, which is really good. I'm just not up in the race. No, just make the four. He's not up in the race. He should be playing for the contact, right? This makes life easier for me to just clear over his head. If he had the four point and there was an open five point, uh, we kind of call that a phantom point in backgammon, right? Because I have to either fill that in or jump over that and your anchor for the rest of the game, which is difficult. And here, because of the two blots in his board, they wanted me to play one checker down. And now I'm not winning the race anymore. Thirteen to nine. I only get hit with two six, and that never happens, right? So five one. I guess it just slots the one point. That would be my play. Six to one, three to two. They liked a little bit better. Six three makes the four. Two two comes out. Very annoying. Five one. Five one. Five one. He's not going anywhere. Not into a triple shot, of course. Three one. Apparently, they just want me to play six to two. So if he comes off, I get a triple shot. But I thought this was pretty efficient. But I would have gotten like way more shots the other way. three and I don't know I do this for half a second then I put it back and realize it's only five five extra and then I have many more numbers to make the five which I end up feeling like good about and end up doing it and it ends up being right by quite a big margin actually he enters with two four and the four comes in. Double twos makes the two point. Oh, we pause the clock again. He missed something. And this is the most annoying moment of the match for me because we come back from a correction and I should still be on in firing but sometimes you know outside things happen and I lose I lost my focus here actually I lost my focus um, this is my fault for losing my focus I just roll uh, but he's on the roof against a five-point board and this is just like a massive 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 pass and I realize it like right now that I messed up. I think about if I double, like he can't redouble for the match. So his take point isn't 
ridiculously off from what it would be for money in this situation. And this is just a massive pass. If you could hear my voice right there, you can hear me say that there was a cue before. I just missed it in the... in the in the mix-up there you know which is annoying we're both in the 30 second mark here parents are not making the five point play <laughs> Four three is a bit of a nothing roll. It likes six to two, but that's hard for me. This is more my style of play. Just go to make structure. This should make the advanced anchor, I think. Double fours, and we could make the five, but you know why switch from nine when we can just make a new point with the four? And now we've got much better structure in front of him. 13 to 9. 4 2. Just make a new point and step up. And just hope he doesn't point on me. He does point on me with 5 4. Just enter Justin. No! 3-1, that makes the 8 point and plays down. Two three, what a shot. What a shot making the advanced anchor. I'm feeling better now. 5-3, just slots the 2 point. I don't think they want to come down because my midpoint is stripped and I might roll some silly number that gives them a shot from there. 3-1 just makes the 5. No need to play like a chicken here we just make the point improve our board so even if he does hit us maybe we hit him back and then we've got a good board right so he rolls a hitting number and the computer says it's really close whether or not we should hit or not hit Oliver chooses to not hit and I roll three one and my brain silly like in a silly way wants the positions to look similar I could have just kept the the point of contact further away, which would have been better. But like for comedy, I just make the other play because it's funnier. Five one. So step one hit. And the question of whether or not I should lift or I should be leaving checkers in the outfield and the point slotted to try to make it is just a question of how much work it's going to take for me to get home and get around the board. And since it's going to take a lot of work for me to get out and around the board, I leave it slotted because I need to make it in order to give myself the time to get around the board. So you tell yourself this story and you find the play to just leave it there and you take the risk. Then you get away with it, you end up making it, and hopefully, hopefully, you get this to work. That doesn't go anywhere, so we just play in. Five four. Six three. I make a silly play here. I leave a one six. And I should just bring this in. My my worry was that if I bring it in and he rolls an ace and then I roll a six, I have to leave a shot somewhere. Um which I was concerned with. And ended up bringing up my PR to a 2.33 that last play. Right, and I just get rid of the point instantly as well, giving myself more spares to make the ace point. 4-1 just makes it now. 
So I'm trying to avoid bad big doubles, which is why I end up playing to the, the deuce point. 6-4. And uh, there's no gamins for me to, to win here. So I'm just trying to not leave a shot. And I'm just praying that Oliver enters. 4-1, no men off. Just clear and just enter, Oliver. Just enter. 4-2 fans. 5-1, just pick it up like this. 5-1 enters, and the match is won. Nice. Well, thank you all for joining me today. Uh, if anyone is interested in backgammon lessons with me, Justin Noel, please feel free to send me an email at justin at backgammonuniversity.com. Please smash the like button and subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoy content like this, let me know with a comment down below. Thank you all for tuning in. Have a good day. Uh,